You know, it's kind of funny because when it comes to the Buffalo Sabres, everybody's talking about Jack Eichel and the trade rumors and destinations and all that stuff. But I think most people kind of do know that Jack Eichel isn't really the only quote-unquote trade piece that the Buffalo Sabres have on their roster at the moment. The other one is Taylor Hall, and he was a guy that was supposed to be in a weird position where if the Sabres did well in 2021, Hall, as a guy who signed a one-year $8 million contract this previous offseason, could use that as an opportunity for him to up his stock, win a few playoff rounds, win a Stanley Cup maybe, up his value on the free agent market, and sign an even bigger contract next offseason. But if the Sabres were going to be bad, which is what they're doing right now, because he's only on a one-year deal, it's a lot easier for the Sabres to say, okay, we're going to trade you away to a cup-contending team, we'll get assets back because we need assets, we need a boatload of assets, we don't have any assets anymore, and you're going to do probably the same kind of process with that brand new team you get traded to, boost your value, maybe win a playoff round, maybe win a cup, and then in the next year's free agency period, you can get some more money. How's that sound? It's a win-win for everybody involved, right? But the way the Sabres are going right now, the team is absolute garbage. They're just down the drain right now in terms of their on-ice production. The top guys, Eichel and Hall, these guys aren't scoring any goals. And now you have this article coming out on Bleacher Report, written by Lyle Richardson, talking about five landing spots for Buffalo Sabres winger Taylor Hall. Now, Lyle Richardson is indeed the guy who writes Spectres Hockey, so I personally have a boatload of respect for this guy because he's always the guy coming in here and compiling the trade rumors of the day in the NHL. But his article over here on Bleacher Report goes over five different teams that might be very good suitors for Taylor Hall. They are in order. The Boston Bruins, the Carolina Hurricanes, the Columbus Blue Jackets, the Florida Panthers, and the Montreal Canadiens. Now, let's just go over each of these teams, talk about the idea of Taylor Hall going over onto these squads and what exactly the Buffalo Sabres could expect in return. Of course, I will leave a link in the description to this article. You can go ahead and read it yourself. Richardson does a very good job explaining these individual teams and their stories and just how exactly things could unfold. So, Taylor Hall, as we all kind of know, he was a very good NHL player a few years ago. 90 points in the MVP back in 2017-2018. But afterwards, as his career has gone on, he has been injured a few times. It sidelined him for quite a bit. He is definitely not exhibiting the same amount of success this year with the Sabres as he did in previous years past with the Devils. He's at 13 points in 21 games and only two goals. So, for the Boston Bruins, first and foremost, they are a team that a lot of people are expecting to might actually be going out there and looking for a very good, experienced player to add in their top six and to actually cement themselves as a top contender for this year's Stanley Cup. The Bruins are hungry. They're in a position where they have the assets to burn, and Patrice Bergeron isn't really getting any younger, you know? You have limited amounts of young talent on your roster, and you have a boatload of potential with Pasternak, Marshan, and Bergeron as a line. Not to mention David Krejci. He's expiring soon as well. So, for the Bruins, a team that went to the finals in 2019 but could not get it done, we know how big the desire is there to continue and go even further. So, if a Taylor Hall is on their radar, wouldn't be surprised. If a Jack Eichel is on their radar, I wouldn't be surprised. That was already a video topic we made the other day, so I think... You kind of understand the Bruins are in that position where they are going for it and they want to get assets that could help them out in the short term. And by the short term, I mean literally in the next few months in the playoffs because they are just that competitive already. The next team on this list is the Carolina Hurricanes. They are one of the better teams in the Central Division this year. However, as the article states, they have indeed fallen to a few injuries on their lineup. The article makes a great point that the Hurricanes are cycling guys out on that left wing spot on their second line. So who knows if a Taylor Hall, a number one guy in Buffalo who is in a peculiar position at the moment, could be available for trade and could be that guy to slot in on your top six left wing, that final spot, full time. 
The Hurricanes are not opposed to making trades. They've already done that in the Dezingle for Paquette deal. They traded away Galchenyuk as well to Toronto because of course they did. But they're in a position where they are indeed a little bit more flexible with their top six maneuverability. So if you add a guy like Taylor Hall to come in here, all of a sudden your forward core looks great. Svechnikov, Ajo, Trocek, Stahl, not to mention Taylor Hall. It'd be cool seeing Taylor Hall playing with Eric Stahl to going to play with Jordan Stahl. And then it would be even funnier if Mark Stahl gets traded from Detroit to any of these teams because, of course, you gotta love the Stahl connection over there, buddy. Next up on this list I wanted to talk about next, it is the Columbus Blue Jackets. Now, the Jackets are in a weird spot because John Tortorella is in a contract year and the team isn't really winning as many games as people thought they would be, even with that acquisition of Patrick Laine. Line has been great. He's scoring goals seemingly every night now, and everybody in Columbus is kind of getting that Finnish feeling of what it's like having a guy who can absolutely just bury it every time he touches the puck. But the bottom line is the Blue Jackets, who were so competitive last season, who have been still kind of riding the high of eliminating Tampa Bay all those years ago and eliminating Toronto in the play-ins last year as well, they're not really performing up to expectations. They're not winning as many games as they thought they could. So, could there be a Taylor Hall on the horizon that might actually be a guy to come in here and help out this team even more? You thought Pierre-Luc Dubois was a loss? Hey, that's okay. Jack Roslovic is looking pretty good. Patrick Laine is looking even better. And if you add a Taylor Hall, things could take another complete step forward. The article talks about how the Blue Jackets have about $4.8 million in cap space at the moment, so maybe it's a Max Domi that they offer going over to Buffalo, which would be incredible because they just traded for that guy too. I certainly wouldn't be opposed to the idea if I was the Columbus Blue Jackets because Taylor Hall is really, really good. It's just whether or not a Taylor Hall would actually want to wave if he sees confidence in the Blue Jackets to accomplish what he wants to do for 2021 and the playoffs. That's an entirely different question. So for Columbus, there certainly is a good conversation to have. I just don't really know how likely it is. Next up, though, on the article, it is the Florida Panthers. Now, these guys have been legit. Like, wow, I am so surprised with how well the Florida Panthers are doing this season. And you take a look at who's getting it done on this team, and you see a very diverse selection of guys scoring goals and getting points. Look at how spread out the goal scoring is in Florida this year. Frank Vitrano is at seven goals. You have Aaron Ekblad at eight. Verhage's at eight. Hornquist, nine. Huberto, nine. Barkov, eight. You have so much spread out scoring from this lineup, up and down, not just forwards, but forwards and defensemen, that it's really cool to see how the Florida Panthers have just started clicking together. And who knows if a Taylor Hall-like piece is that final upgrade that they need to take their team from a, wow, they're actually doing really well kind of team, to, wow, these guys are legit contenders now kind of team status. You know what? Honestly, I could see it working out, mostly because, and it's noted here in the article, the Panthers have $12.5 million in trade deadline cap space, and that's a lot. You could just take on Taylor Hall for a seventh round pick if you really wanted to. So leverage really is there for the Panthers. They really just wanted to send over a few selection of picks and maybe some other prospects and some underused forwards. They could do it. They have more than enough cap space to do that. And finally, the Montreal Canadiens are the last team mentioned here. And it's funny, you know, the Habs are at a spot where they're losing games in overtime, but they're tying things late. So there's a lot of good right now, I guess, but there's also a lot of bad because the team isn't winning as much as they did before. Systems are changing, coaches have changed, special teams are different, and now overtime is filled with Yoel Armia. Not really looking all too good out there. But Taylor Hall... Ooh, baby, is this a different conversation we can have here? The article talks about the inefficiencies and the cycling going on on the left side with Druan and Tatar and the swapping around of guys like Toffoli and all that stuff. So, hey, is Taylor Hall a piece that you would see interest in if you're the Montreal Canadiens? The Canadiens have about $4.3 million in projected trade deadline cap space, which would make things a little bit difficult. But there are indeed some other players on the Habs that 
might be a little bit expendable if you think about it. Lekkonen is mentioned here in the article. Tatar is over here, and so is Philippe Deneau. But, of course, if you're a Canadiens team that wants to go far into the playoffs, depending on what you see in Philippe Deneau and Tatar and all those guys, who knows how willing they would be to trade away any of these players for another asset like Taylor Hall coming back, along with some draft picks and all that, just to even the scales out a little bit. And I wanted to end off the video with this team right here because, well, first off, it's last in the article. Secondly... The Habs fan base, it's pretty big, and we've got a lot of Habs fans on this YouTube channel. Let me know in the comments what you think about Taylor Hall and whether or not you would accept a trade, depending on what it's for, to your respective fan base. If you're a Bruins fan, if you're a Hurricanes fan, a Florida Panthers fan, a Blue Jackets fan, or a Habs fan, let me know in the comments what you think about this idea here. Obviously, the link is in the description to the article. Go ahead and read it. Give Lyle Richardson some love because he does do a good job compiling these pieces. I hope you enjoyed this video slash rose 99 and bye